from the local station. The Morning Show starts now. Developing now at 9, a car crashed into a home in Harborview on Jacksonville's north side. These are images from the scene from earlier. As bad as the damage looks, thankfully, no one was hurt. And this is video of the road where that home was, neighbors say. So this is unfortunately not the first time this has happened. Here's another look at the damage from inside the house. Right now, we are still waiting to hear from the sheriff's office about how this car ended up inside. News for Jack's reporter Brittany Muller is live at the scene right now. You know, Brittany, this is wild. You've been there all morning long. Four people were actually inside the home when that car came barreling through it. Zach and one person was on the couch and he says that he had to duck and take a cover to protect himself. All four people inside at the time are OK. Take a look at this damage. There's wires hanging down. The meter is over here. The family has no running water, so it's a big mess out here and they're going to be working to clean up this mess. And if we come over here, we can see right through the living room where this happened and you can see it's a big mess. The resident I spoke with, he doesn't want to be identified, but he says that this is not the first time that a car has come crashing through his home. It happened two and a half years ago at this same location. He also says it happened to his neighbor just two weeks ago. And if we turn the camera this way, we can see those tire marks from Clyde Drive, and this has been an ongoing issue in this area. This family is now pleading with the city, city council members to make some changes to protect his family, to protect the neighbors, and also city council has been listening to people about a petition about them addressing issues off Sutel Drive, which is right around the corner from where we are on Clyde Drive, and residents in this area are concerned that they're, the city is addressing the wrong problem. So I did reach out to City Councilwoman Brenda Priestley Jackson to find out more information about this. But what you're looking at now is video sent in by the residents here of the car just smashing in to this home. It happened around midnight. Officers were out here and the tow truck removed the car. So listen to what the homeowner has to say. We got schools in the area. We got children walking back and forth. We need some help with speed around here in Clyde Drive. We need to wind the roads. And you can see some of this debris, the cinder blocks making it dozens of feet away from where the car smashed into the home, causing more damage to their car in their driveway. So no word yet about the people that were inside of the vehicle that smashed into the home. Although the resident here said there were two people, a man and a woman. So we have reached out to Jacksonville Sheriff's Office as well as the city council members to find out more information. So as soon as we learn more, of course, we will keep you updated. Reporting live this morning from the north side, Brittany Muller, Channel 4, the local station. What a scene. We're so glad to hear everyone inside that home is okay. Thank you so much, Brittany, for that report. And thank you so much for joining us. As you already know, we don't have to tell you, we are off to a wet start today. And this right here is a live look at Jacksonville Beach, proving that theory. You can see the <laughs> raindrops on the lens there. A few people out there Trying to get some exercise in this morning. Let's check in with meteorologist Danielle Giuliano. Danielle, is this sticking around? Yeah, we're going to see the showers <laughs> through today. Let's just deem today a day to stay inside, grab that book, grab that coffee, watch the news, catch in with everything daily, maybe watch some Netflix or some Hulu. Just stay inside and enjoy and relax. Tomorrow's going to be the day where you can step outside and enjoy the sunshine. Right now, we're going to be tracking some showers on exact track 4D this morning. Again, stretching everywhere from I-75 to I-95. Areas like McClenny across I-10 there. Over by Columbia County, Union County, Baker County. Moving into Duval and Nassau County, we're seeing these showers. And these are just very light showers. It's not a heavy downpour that's making its way through right now. Moving over closer to our beaches here, Jacksonville. 
Mill Beach, we just saw some of those raindrops on our camera. Just, just north of the Nocatee area here in Ponte Vedra, even Orange Park across 17, across the 295 loop. Even on the north side there, over in the Yulee area, you're seeing some of those showers as well. And moving over to the west here, across 441 White Springs area over by Jasper, you're seeing some of those showers as well. And up across portions of southeast Georgia, St. Mary's, Kingsland, across 17, I-95, over by Folkestone, you're seeing some of that light to moderate rainfall as well. This is going to continue through the morning into the afternoon. But again, we'll start to taper things up as we head through this evening. Sunshine makes a comeback Sunday, and those temperatures will really warm things up this week. I'll tell you know which day we can see temperatures close to 80 degrees coming up in just a few minutes. Danielle, thank you. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is now available at the Gateway Mall and the two satellite sites at Normandy Community Center and Hammond Senior Center. The federal site has been offering the Pfizer vaccine, but will now offer both options. It opened about two hours ago and will stay open until 7 o'clock tonight. You can find the eligibility requirements on our website, newsforjax.com. More than 1,300 Floridians received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine this week. This vaccine only requires one dose. Overall, more than 3.3 million people in the Sunshine State have received a COVID-19 vaccine. As the rollout continues, Governor DeSantis says vaccinations will be based on age, not profession, saying, quote, we will move the age down. I haven't got that exact date because it's dependent on the vaccine supply and it's dependent on making sure we're getting shots in the arms for seniors, end of quote. Meanwhile, all veterans enrolled in the VA are eligible to receive the vaccine. The North Florida South Georgia Veterans Health System says it has administered 14,000 doses of the vaccine at its Jacksonville clinic. On Friday, I was at the clinic when 40 veterans received their second dose of the vaccine. Tell me your last four. Veteran after veteran. You're all set, sir. A quick pinch. Thank you for your service. Thank you. In the comfort of their car. I'm just glad to get the shot. I got some relief off me now. Lewis Coleman Jr. in the back seat. Two years in, in the Army. Curtis Coleman in the front seat. 20 years, 14 days, United States Army, first sergeant. I'm glad to get it. I need it because I have COPD. And thank God I can fight the virus now. Take a look at this. This is a close-up of the drive through process where 40 veterans received their second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Well, of course, like everybody else, we targeted our highest risk um, first. North Florida South Georgia Veterans Health System serves more than 145,000 veterans throughout 50 counties. In the Jacksonville market, we have about 47,000 enrolled. Ken Baxter. I served during Vietnam. Is thankful for a second dose. Just feeling a little bit more secure when I'm going out to do errands. After all, these men and women are not used to sitting on the sidelines. So all you vets out there, come get your shots. Toplin got healed, and that's an order. Regardless of their age, they're ready to defend again. The drive through vaccination site in Jacksonville is open Monday through Friday by appointment only. Today, there will be an indoor vaccine drive. This is also by appointment only. For no appointment vaccines, veterans of all ages can be vaccinated at the American Legion Post 57 in Lake City from March 9th through the 12th. For more information about all of these vaccination drives, head to our website, newsforjax.com. Right now, Bethel Missionary Baptist Church is administering the COVID-19 vaccine to those that are eligible. That includes people 65 and older, healthcare workers, first responders, K through 12 teachers that are 50 and older. As I mentioned, it just opened around nine o'clock this morning and will be open until three o'clock this afternoon. In Georgia, a new vaccine site will open or did just open rather about an hour ago at eight o'clock this morning at the Linda S. Pinson Conference Center on Parkwood Drive. People who are eligible to get the vaccine at this location are those that are 65 and older, caregivers, first responders and health care workers. It is open from eight o'clock this morning, so about an hour ago until three o'clock this afternoon. Then on Monday, the state of Georgia 
will allow more people to get the COVID-19 vaccine. They will be expanding eligibility to people in the state, to teachers and staff, adults with developmental disabilities, caregivers, parents of children with medical conditions. It is important to remember that if you do get the Pfizer vaccine, you do need to wait to get the second dose 21 days after you got the first dose. For the Moderna shot, the time between doses is 28 days. All of this information and much more can be found on our website, newsforjax.com slash coronavirus. We know it's a lot of information to digest, so we do have maps of all of the testing and vaccination sites. And we also provide a county by county breakdown of all the COVID-19 cases reported in your neighborhood. Covering St. John's County, we're taking a live look through the Guy Harvey Sky Cam at St. Augustine Beach. Look at that, rainy there as well. This is the first weekend people driving on sections of Volano, St. Augustine, and Crescent Beach will have to pay to drive on the sand. An annual pass costs $50 for residents and $100 for people who do not live there. Daily tolls are $10 for everyone. Beach access for disabled veterans is free. Happening today in Clay County, the fifth annual Strawberry Festival is offering tons of family fun and, of course, delicious Plant City strawberries to eat. The event starts at 10 and goes until 5 today and tomorrow. General admission is $6, but for children two years and younger, well, they can get in for free. Clay County officials are asking you to wear a mask and practice social distancing while walking around. Warmer weather is on the way for spring break, and many students, including those here in Duval County, are enjoying a week off from school. This year will obviously look much different than last year now that we have a hold on the pandemic. But in just a few minutes, we're talking with Visit Jacksonville's president and CEO about what we can expect this year. And right now, we're taking a live look through our South Bank Skycam, a dreary start to our Saturday morning. Meteorologist Danielle Giuliano is tracking rain moving through our area. 9-11, we'll be right back.